So you're over 40. Well done and congratulations. Me too. And today I'm going to teach you how to ride a skateboard. Okay, so you're over 40. So you got to take it a little bit more gentle, a little bit more easy. And what we're going to do when we start every skateboard day as an over 40 year old person is you're going to do this. You're going to do some stretching. Ow, do you hear that? There was a big pop there. I don't know why every time I start doing this for the first time, just pop, snap, crackle, pop. Just get your arms moving like that. And then um, I always like to do this one a little bit too. It's a dynamic stretching. I can't do that too much because I'm still recovering on this foot. On the other foot, I'll be able to do it better. But you want to get your, your legs kicking, your muscles moving, your joints moving. Here like this. Somebody sent me like a picture of Can Can Girls. And they said, Aaron, this is what you look like. <laughs> I said, well, that's great because I bet you they're well stretched out. And that's what matters. Hopefully I don't fall over. That'd be not good for my over 40 year old skaters. Also, by the way guys, it doesn't matter how old you are. It matters how much fun you're having. It doesn't matter what you look like. The thing about skateboarding is open to everyone and every person. And uh, it doesn't matter your age. Just get out there and have an absolute blast. So get stretched out. Another one that I think is really good is this one. You're gonna push that leg over and then Make sure your back is a little bit stretched. Just move it like that. And then, uh, yeah, you're good to go. Arms, legs. Now, you're gonna take your skateboard. I got my best beginner complete here and I'm gonna put it down. And the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out which way you ride. And before you even figure out which way you ride, put on a helmet, elbow pads, knee pads, wrist guards if you have them, all the protection gear, again, it doesn't matter what you look like. It matters that you're safe and you're having fun. The last thing you want is for you to not have a helmet on, step on this board, not have your legs bent, and then fly up and hit your head. See? I've just got to show this. Got I some beginner that. skaters. She's got a surf skate. The way you're going to figure out which way you're rolling. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so you're over 40. You're learning how to ride a skateboard. First things first, you're gonna run and pretend like you're sliding on ice in whichever foot you naturally put forward. Do not overthink this. This is not a decision. You're not like, oh, I like left foot. I'll put left foot forward. No, it's a natural, just what feels better. So pretend you're on a giant sheet of ice. You're in Canada. It's nice and snowy. You run, you slide. For me, the right foot forward just naturally goes forward. If I run and slide and the left foot goes forward, that is left foot forward. So if my right foot goes forward, I'm putting my right foot on the front and I'm gonna push with my left foot. And it would be vice versa the other way, right? Left foot forward is called regular. Right foot forward is called goofy. Apparently, because Goofy from the Disney Channel was surfing and he had his right foot forward. I don't know if that's a rumor. I don't know if that's true. Fun facts for the over 40 guys. Okay, so put your right foot, if it's right foot forward on the board, and you're gonna go as if you're walking. So I want you to actually put the board there and actually just walk. Step one is just walk. Step over the board and just walk. If you cannot walk and you're over 40, I completely understand your pain. It's like when you get up in the morning and it's rough. So put your front foot on there and just walk. That's all you're gonna do. Do not get speed. Do not get overexcited. Just walk, keep your knees bent, and keep it going. The other tip that I have if you're over 40 is get out and move a little bit every day. You might skate a little bit and then you're feeling sore the next day. Just minimize your session that next day, but still do the stretching still do all the warm-ups and still get on that board it'll help you a lot help you progress really fast too and maybe you're over 40 you don't even care about progressing you just want to get out and have some fun so front foot straight walk practice this for a little while and again you're not you're not trying to break some world speed record you're not trying to look cool you're just trying to get used to the board That dog does not like skateboards or people over 40. So your front foot is on there. You're getting comfortable just with a little walk. And then you're gonna put your back foot on. That's your next step. Front foot, push, back foot on. And then your front foot, you're gonna turn it. But first steps first is just a little, just a little push. 
Bend your knees. Most key important thing, bend your knees. You're not learning this yet, so don't, don't bother with that. Just step off and turn around. Front foot on there, push, turn. The dogs are coming after me today. <laughs> push, turn your front foot, just like that. Front foot, push, turn. You wanna bend your knees the whole time, and when you're ready to push again, turn your front foot and give it another push. You can repeat that as many times as necessary, and I recommend you do repeat that for days and days and days. Get out on your board, 10 minutes, 20 minutes every day, do a little stretching, put your front foot on, give it a push, and just, just cruise, just a few pushes. Both feet on, like that, straightened out. Turn the front foot, give it a push, boom. Remember, keeping your knees bent is vital, vital, vital. And you might be wondering, because I'm always talking about the feet, what the feet are doing. Obviously, skateboarding is very focused on the feet, but what is your upper body doing? You're gonna always lead with your shoulder, your hand and your shoulder are going forward, and they're keeping that board going in the direction you want it to go in. So when you start to turn, which we're not getting there yet, but we will get there, you're always gonna lead with your upper body. But when you're even just going straight, it's almost as if you're pointing the direction you're going with your shoulder and going that way. So you can give it a push, you're leaning forward, boom. Step off, give it another push. Key, 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 I'm gonna keep repeating it. Always bend your knees. I'll tell you why, especially when you're over 40. Because when your knees are bent, and let's say you have to fall, you can go like this. It's more just like you're sitting down, right? But if your knees are not bent, and you're like this, you're very stiff-legged, up like that, and you fall, well, now you're really falling. The other thing is, it is important to learn how to fall. The number one mistake that you can make in falling is when you're going down and you have momentum, you try and stop your momentum with the arm out. This can injure you. You can stick your arm out and it, and it can actually break your arm or your wrist or whatever. I know that might be a little bit alarming, but you don't wanna do that. Better than that, you keep it in and you're gonna tuck and roll. If I'm falling forward like this, I wanna just tuck my arm in and roll. <laughs> if I go like this, I'm falling and I try and hold my arm out and stop my momentum, this is a point, a pressure point, that's gonna hurt a lot, and I can injure my arm there, I could injure my shoulder. Whereas if you just tuck and you're rolling, you roll it out, you just roll, and then you're fine. You're obviously gonna stop rolling, then you stand up and you're fine. If you tr try and put your arm out, ooh, that can hurt. This is painful. So keep that in mind. It's proper etiquette to learn how to fall, to know what's occurring there and just not get into that at all. But when you do fall, if you are gonna fall, you need to know what to do. If you have elbow pads and knee pads, another good thing is to learn. You can do the knee slide. I don't have knee pads on me right now, otherwise I'd show you. But boom, straight to the knee and you can practice that. But remember, the second you take those knee pads off, you better not get into the muscle memory of putting your knees down or that's gonna hurt a lot. But the key in learning how to fall is, remember, tuck in. And you're over 40, you have to be prepared. Part of skateboarding is falling, it is gonna happen. No matter how good you are, no matter how skilled you are, you're gonna fall down. Okay, so we got the push, we're learning how to fall, you got your helmet on, you're prepped, you're ready. Now, the next step is a little kick turns. We're just gonna put a little bit of weight there, lift up on the front foot, and give it a turn. Now the proper thing here is your turn with your upper body as well, upper body first, then the feet. Very important. Upper body first, then the feet. And you can give it a little push and then a little turn. This is a backside kick turn. Backside is toward your toes, going that way. Woo! See, I hit a rock. I could have fallen. I gotta know how to fall. Let's give it a push, backside kick turn. When you're very first starting out and you're just practicing, it's important that you do all of these little steps because you're getting used to that board. You're getting used to how it feels. You're getting used to the way your trucks feel when you move side to side. And you're just standing still, keep it safe. 
So that's back side. Front side is this direction. I recommend you work on both ways. It can be really difficult at first because you're like, your balance is not so good and you have to learn how to move your upper body first. Upper body turn, then legs. Upper body turn, then legs. Now I'll go back side, turn, then legs, turn, then legs. And you can do that until you can do a 360. Get comfortable and then do the other way, 360 the other way. Spend as much time as you need. Have fun learning. And then your next step is give it a push and then little kick turns. Just the tiniest little kick turns. Give it another push, little kick turns. Push, kick turns. I think backside going this way is easier. For you, it might be front side. You might feel more comfortable going that direction. Just give it a little push, kick turn. By now you're starting to get to this point on your skateboard where you're getting a little bit comfortable. You're starting to feel a lot better. You're starting to feel how the board works, the momentum of it. You got your helmet on, your elbow pads, your knee pads. You can fall and you're not gonna stick your arm out and stop yourself and hurt yourself. You know what's going on. And at this point, it's really important every day you get out on your board, do a little stretching, put that front foot on and give it some pushing. Push around. To the point where you're getting a little faster and a little faster getting a little bit more proficient on your board each and every day. So the key with progressing is constant improvement every day. The next step after you've got the backside kick turn and the front side kick turn is to do what we call in the skateboard world a tic-tac. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to tic-tac. So you're gonna give it a little push, you're gonna go backside kick turn, then front side kick turn. This one will take you a while. Do not be under the idea that like, oh, you step on a skateboard, you watch a tutorial video, 20 minutes in, you're just killing it. It takes a lot of practice. It can take days, especially if you're over 40. You gotta take extra special care of your body. This is actually healthy. You're over 40, you get out there, you're moving around a lot. Just know your limits, pace yourself, wear a helmet, elbow pads, be safe, don't fall, do not injure yourself. You're over 40, you heal slower. So backside, front side, backside, Front side. I'm gonna turn around and show you this way. Back side, front side. So my shoulder and my arm go first, then my foot. Shoulder first, then foot. And then when you get comfortable at that, you do it a little faster and you can move. Shoulder, arm, foot. Shoulder, arm, foot. Back side, front side. Back side, front side. And you get that tic-tac down. Get that tic-tac going, you're feeling good. And every day you're getting a little bit better. The other point of advice I wanna give you is every single day, always end on an improvement. You never wanna end your session at a point where you feel like, I can't do this, this is too hard. You always wanna go, I can do this, I'm feeling better. And then you can end right there. And then the next day, when you wake up, if you're skating in the morning or at the end of your work day or whenever, you can go, yeah, I can do this because you ended on that, on that improvement and it will help you progress. One of the number one questions I get in skateboarding is I lose my motivation. How do I keep my motivation going? I've got to somehow figure out how to stay motivated. And um, I can just say, well, stay motivated. But I think the thing that's really helpful is if every time you skate, you're like, wow, I improved. Because when you're constantly improving and you're constantly getting a little better and a little better, you're gonna wanna keep improving and getting a little better and a little better. So it's important that you end on an improvement. So if you get out there and you're over 40 and you get the Tic Tacs down and you're rolling like that, you can pretty much at that point turn, you can push. Now you can cruise your skateboard pretty much anywhere because you can go backwards, forwards, any direction. You get that Tic Tac rolling, and you're good. And then you're rolling. And from there, you can start in on more and more tricks. 
So there is a trick ladder that I built. I've been working on this trick ladder for a really long time. I did make a tutorial video called Skateboarding Made Simple Volume Zero, which is absolutely free. It covers the beginning 10 tricks. It covers all of the basic riding tricks and then the pre-basic tricks, all easier than the Ollie. 20 tricks easier than the Ollie that are also in the Braille skateboarding app, which I will show you. Unfortunately, the Braille skateboarding app is no longer available on Android, um, but it is available on the iPhone. It looks like that, and it has all the tricks there in the correct order. You can also download for free. I'll put the link in the description below, Skateboarding Made Simple Volume Zero. I think this is a really, really good path. Um, you're over 40, you're not trying to mess around with watching 300 different tutorial videos on YouTube, or maybe you do want to. I have probably 2,000 tutorial videos on YouTube to choose from, but this makes it an easy, smooth progression for you. I also started something called the Braille Skateboarding Academy, um, which you can join and I will directly teach you. You can send in videos of yourself pushing, kick turns, kick flips, ollies, whatever trick you're working on and get help from me directly. I also have on BrailleSkateboarding.com in the community section, a place where you can submit your skate support videos. So if you just have a question, you're like, Aaron, I've been struggling on the ollie for five years or five months or five days or five minutes, feel free to send me a video on the skate support line. I will instruct you and I will make that video and I will send it back and um, we'll post it on the internet for other people just like you, the beginning skateboarder, to learn. The reason we're out here, the reason we make all these videos is to get new people on a skateboard. Skateboarding changed my life. I love it so much. I really want to share this passion with others. So that's why we're doing what we do. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. We hope you got something out of it. Get out there and ride your skateboard. We'll see you in the next video.